Hey, let's all stand and give the Lord a round of applause this morning. Hallelujah, and say Merry Christmas, amen. I said glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Church, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, get excited about Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Look at somebody again and say Merry Christmas, Jack. Let's pray. Gracious Lord, we thank you that you have sent your one and only son down here to planet Earth to straighten it out. We'll leave it in your hands, Lord God. Joy can only come from you. We know that happiness is fleeting. Your true word is our anchor of hope in such a dark world. We thank you today, Lord God, that we can call you Savior and King. In your name, Jesus, we say Merry Christmas and Amen. One more time with applause for the Lord. Amen. <laughs> Dr. Luke writes his book from a position of looking through Mary's eyes at the Christmas story, and Joseph is depicted by uh, Matthew. Um, so I chose this because it's got so, so many wonderful nuggets uh, of truth that you need to you need to collect. And watch me now. The, 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 your, your 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 joy, watch this. Your joy can only come from these nuggets of truth from Jesus. Did you hear me? Your 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 joy can only come from the nuggets of truth from God's spoken word. You're, you're not going to get that from a family member. You're not going to get that from the, the latest, greatest gift. You're not going to get that from uh, you're, you're, you're not going to get that from self-help books or anything like that. All your joy, all the joy that you have in your life, can only come from one source, and that's Jesus, the joy giver. Amen. Amen. I just made everything real simple for you, didn't I? Watch it now, because. A lot of folk, not you guys, but at other churches, they have problem with, with finding joy. You know, it, it, it's almost like a, a pinball machine. You ever seen a pinball machine? Some kids here don't even know what a pinball machine is. <laughs> Back, we used to have a place called Weird Willies, if you guys are from the neighborhood. And, and it, it, you, watch, you watch a ball just kind of go around. It bounces off just everywhere, and, and, and people... Or look for joy in the craziest places. See, I'm not talking about happiness. Ha your happiness is fleeting. Happiness comes from happenings. You didn't get that. Happiness comes from happening. I'm not looking for, for ha happiness or happenings. I've had all that before. I mean, you've had all that. But, but the, the, some folk are running around looking for joy, and they kind of just bounce around like a pinball machine. They go here, and they, they try a little bit of this, and... And then, and then they try a little bit of that, and then they go here, and then they go here, and they go here, and they, they do all that. Follow me, follow me. And they're all over here, and, and I'm telling you right now, look at this. Stop. True joy only comes through Jesus. Hey, hey let me tell you something. If you, hey, amen, if you've been there and done that, go ahead and applaud the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> Everybody's looking for the latest and greatest buzz. Let me tell you something. You want to get high on something. Get high on the Holy Ghost. and you, you it, It's a constant flow. It's a heavenly flow that never gets shut off. You never have to, to run out and re-up on your whatever. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You got to re-up. Huh? Amen. Um, so let's go to our story today, the story of Jesus. Luke 2, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Cornelius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up 
from the Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there uh, to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped them in cloths and placed them in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. He will... Uh, this will be a sign you will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left him and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord this morning, amen? Um, so in the Christmas story, uh, Dr. Luke writes this because uh, he doesn't only want just his friend Theophilus to get the story, he wants you to get it. So what you need to do is, is pull this story up close to you and, and, and grab on to its truths and download these truths into your data bank, amen? And let these... Let these truths be the, the Christmas present that God is trying to give everybody. He's trying to give this world, this lost world, the message of salvation. So he came down here from heaven to be born of a baby so you and I could receive salvation. Somebody, while I was reading this story, God said somebody's going to be born again today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I, I, I don't know. I, I'm going to believe. Hold on. Yeah. And you should applaud because he's going to do something. And, and I don't know if that's going to be here or at O'Fallon or, or people uh, that, that are at home and watching in the living room right now. So the message is clear. Jesus saves. Before I get into the Christmas story, you ask, hey, Pastor, what does he save me from? He saves you from everything. He saves you from yourself. He saves you from your sin. He saves you from despair. He saves you from depression. He saves you from any and everything that is keeping you from the freedom that Jesus can give you. Amen? He wants to set you free today. That's great news. So this Caesar Augustus is a... Uh, is, is the Caesar Augustus is, a, is an adopted son of Julius Caesar. And you need to watch how all these, these prophetic things take place in this story. So this man issues a decree that's called a census. This is where, census is where you, you take you, and you number how many people are, you know, how many people are in this town, how many people are in this city, and, and that kind of thing. That's what a census is. And, and, and usually when, when governments get programs together like this, they're disguised as one thing, but they're actually trying to do. I'll stay here then. What, what they do is they, they wrap them up in something like this, but actually they're trying to do that. What it is here is they're trying to get more tax dollars out of these people. Doing, all right, I'll stay here. These guys don't want to play. So, oh, you guys, I'm sorry, you too. Um, so so, so they're, they're, they're looking for more tax dollars, so they say, well, we're going to do a census, and they did that every 14 years. So God can allow these heathen kings or these heathen emperors to accomplish his goal. He did this with Pharaoh. He said, the only reason, I'm paraphrasing, the only reason I allowed you to come up is to show that I can, I, I, you could come up so I could show that I can put you down. Yeah. 
No, I'm going to come out in your living room here in a minute. Now watch. I, I get it. Everybody's got something going on, and they got the latest, greatest deal. Let me tell you something. Jesus is a deal breaker. Jesus is a deal breaker because you've got to do something with the grave. You've got to do something with the casket. You've got to do something with the funeral. Everybody has got to. Everybody is. is every, nobody's getting out alive. There's only two people that live forever or never died, actually, is e Enoch and Elijah. And last I checked, my name isn't either of them. So I got to do something with this grave thing. There's a problem here. Jesus is the problem solver. That's why he came. That when I believe upon him, uh, that, 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 that death, the, 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 the actual sting, Beanie, uh, of death is gone because it's actually not death for me because I'm born again. Mike, what I got... I, I got what I actually got is I got I got a launching pad when I leave from planet Earth I go straight into a cloud of glory and the same heavenly host the same heavenly host that showed up to these shepherds are going to show up to Pastor Pat's funeral when he's there and he's going to go all right it's time let's go get ranking and they send the whole heavenly host down there and they shoot they guide me it's like an escort I go straight up into a cloud of glory hey that's good news. That's good news. I got the whole heavenly host following me around. I, I, I pal around with the whole heavenly host. Amen? I've told you before, when people are coming up against Christians, and, and we're in some radical times right now, there's folk out there that don't like Christians. But here's what I got to invite. I want to give you a little 411. That's information for old folk. <laughs> When you come up against a blood-covered Christian, you're coming up against the whole heavenly host. God, you're just God's representative. You're one of his foot soldiers, and he's got a whole display of heavenly hosts around you whenever you go into battle, spiritual battle. You don't go alone. Oh, I'd be happy about that. I'd really be shouting. Amen. So they all went to their hometown to register, verse 4. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the to Bethlehem the town of David because he belonged to the house in the line of David because we knew we knew that Jesus was going to come out of the line of David amen now listen so these guys go up there and he went verse 5 it says he went to register with Mary now he didn't have to take he didn't have to take Mary but I believe he took Mary for a lot of reasons, obviously because prophecy had to be fulfilled. Here we go with another prophecy, and these things got to kind of line up, and you look at him, you go, Pastor, boy, that's really a coincidence. He, he called down a census, you know. Joseph didn't have to take Mary, but he took her anyways. And then as you follow, no, they're not coincidences. These are God-ordained appointments, just like you listen to me. Don't take your eyes off me here. You're here for a reason. You, a lot of, lot of folk go, I, you know, they, they got me here because it's Christmas service, and I, when I get out of here, well, when you get out of here, you can do whatever you want, but you're here right now. And, and here's the deal, and it might be somebody on the Internet right now. They clicked in, they go, I'm a clicking on this crazy dude. Listen to this. You're here for a reason, and I'm the messenger to tell you that Jesus can straighten out your mess. He can turn your mess into a message, and your test into a testimony. Hey, glory. <coughs> hey, that's good preaching right there. And, and you know the craziest thing, because there's people on Sunday morning that are clicking around right now, and they're right here with you. Do you know the pain that they're feeling right now? You remember before you came to Jesus, Brett? Do you remember? Oh, listen to me, church. The mess that was inside of you. There's some brothers and sisters today that are in a mess in their spirit and in their mind. They got some stuff that is really messed up, and they need to hear this Christmas story. Brothers and sisters, you can be born again by choosing Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. Call upon him today. Hey, I got to say it. Oh, man. So they went there, and they got this register thing done, and he took Mary with him, I, I believe, obviously, to fulfill prophecy, because he didn't want to leave his, he didn't want to leave his wife to be behind. 
you can't leave your wives behind, men. You you can't you can't you can't leave them to fare for themselves. They they are to be taken care of. They're they're your gift that God has given you, and you need to draw them close to you and let them know. Well, I won't allow. See, because if if, if she if he left his wife behind, people would be would be would be fooling about with her. They would be they would be running her down. You ever seen somebody get run down? Uh, I mean, they don't do it at this church, but other churches, they, they, they look down on unwed mothers that have babies. Can you imagine 2,000 years ago seeing a woman in there that wasn't, wasn't locked in, wedlocked in? He says, I got to bring you with me. I'll, I'll protect you. And you notice the note, watch me. And, and here's something that you need to notice about, about Joseph. He was a man of action. Say action. action. Say action. action. So here's, here's the deal. Joseph never said anything. There's, there's no record of Joseph ever even speaking. See, all Joseph did is he listened and he acted. There, there's guys that listen and don't do anything. There's guys that listen and talk about it. Then there's guys that listen and, and have some action. And God likes to speak to guys that are going to get something done. They're called the get her done bunch. And Jesus done got her did. So I want you to know something. He wants to speak. I just made up another word, didn't I? <laughs> well, I'll start recording. These are kind of cool. But so, <laughs> Jesus got it done, so all he wants you to do is follow his plan. Yeah. Right, that's all he wants you to do. He don't, he don't want you to try to figure everything out. You ever, you ever get with anybody that, that has every single answer figured out? <laughs> and they're always saying something to you. Hey, you ought to do this. You ought to say, hey, why don't you shut up? <laughs> this Christmas, why don't you give me a whole bunch of shut up? This for your, your gift to me. Why don't you give me some shut up? <laughs> you okay? It's all right. It's okay. We're still in church. I still love Jesus as much as you do. I'm just being real about it. Amen? Let's get back to the Christmas story. So in this... Um, so you find out, um, I'm going to slide down to seven because you guys are getting this. <laughs> the other guys, I had to work with them a little. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> seven, verse seven, two, seven says, and she gave birth to her, say it with me, firstborn and then comma, a son. So he's telling you, they're telling that it's the firstborn child and then they're telling you the sex of the child, which is a boy. And, and, and if, you were, if you were to turn back, we're not going to do that, turn back to Exodus 13 to you, you find out that, 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 that God says to consecrate every firstborn male. And, that, and that, means, that means to be set aside, Joe. Set this one aside. God said, I'm setting this one aside. He's, he's something special. See, God only had one, 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 one child. His name is Jesus. And, and, and this boy is set aside for special work. And his assignment was to be the Christ child. That means Messiah. Okay? Now watch this. I'm going to give you some more, so hold on to these nuggets. She wrapped them in cloths. There was nothing, there was nothing unusual about cloths back in that day. All people in the in Middle Eastern country wrapped their babies in cloths, but there was something special about this baby. This baby was born and placed inside a manger, which is a feeding trough. The, the definition of a manger is, is something that they slap hogs and cows in, and it's to be carved out of a rock inside a cave. That's the definition of a manger, if you're to look it up. It's not this pretty little nativity scene where he's, he's, he's nestled in, this, in, in this, all this hay and everything like this. Caves were cold and dark and damp, and then he was, they, they cleaned out an old feeding trough, and they placed Jesus there so he could let everybody know that only the Messiah... Uh, would and could take on this position so he could he could relate to all your I want to talk to somebody that's been down and out that's why he got he got as low as he possibly could be right right in the cave of probably amongst the dung and everything else that's where you're oh you didn't know that see this is a true Christmas story 
and he was born in the lowliest of places so he could relate to my situation. He, you know what he said to me? He said, I've been there and done that. I've, I've felt your pain. I know what it is to be kicked around. I, I know what it is to, to live in a cold, dark place. Amen. Some of you guys have lived in some, some, some. You know, it's amazing. It's amazing where God can draw you out of. I, I, rem, I, I remember, I remember them cold, dark places. I, I used to live in one. I mean, beds, beds on bricks. And uh, basements flooded, full of stuff. Some of you guys know my story. That's where I used to live. I had a basement on a bed that had bricks. And I had my pit bull tied up to my bed and my mess, and I slept in it and everything. Are you listening to me? God was in that mess. And how do you get there? You get there by following the enemy because he thinks that's where you're supposed to be in your stinking, sloppy mess. And, and then I think about where Jesus was born. He was born in a mess to save a soul like me and you. And he's, and he's, got, he's got a special message for you. And it's he can save your soul. He wants to bring you out of that muck and that mire, that, that old nasty basement that floods and your beds on bricks and all that mess. Maybe you guys never were down that low. But I was down as, as low as I possibly could be. And he saved my soul. That's the Christmas story. And he relates to everything that's going on in your life right now. And, and he so loves you and he so cares about your situation. And he knows some people in here have got some stuff going on. But let's be honest. It, it's, time, it's, time to, it's time to put it down. Let, let's get quiet for just a second. I want, I want to bring you the Christmas story. Jesus wants all of you, your mess and everything. Don't, don't try to clean up to come to Jesus. Don't, don't try to clean yourself up. Don't try to put on the, 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 the special clothes or, 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 or put on the facade to come to Jesus because you'll never come there. You just come to Jesus with, with the mess that you got. and Just go, you know what, man? This is all I got. You may, need, you may not even have a job right now. You may not even have one penny in your pocket. And your family may be a wreck, but God wants it, and he wants you, and he wants you to give your life to him today. Don't, don't let the enemy steal this opportunity. Whether you're here or you're old Fallon or you're, you're I, I think there's some people at home that are watching this. This is a Christmas story that Jesus delivers people out of a mess. So let's glorify him with praise there. Amen. So, if you slide down to 10, he says, I bring you good news. Jesus always brings good news of great joy that will be for all the people today in the town. I bring you, uh, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people, and and, and so many times in churches you, you, you think that these messages are for holy people and people that got it all together. Jesus didn't come for the people that had it together. Jesus came for the people that were messed up. I mean, I mean, it's messy. He came to set you free. Uh, he, ca he came to set the record straight of all the mess. When, when it's too hard for everybody else, listen to me. When it's too hard for everybody else, it's just right for Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The 
Jesus. Somebody's coming right now. Somebody's coming to Jesus right now. So they find this baby wrapped in cloths, lying in a manger, and suddenly a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with angels praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace on whom his favor rests. So that peace that I was talking to you about, I, I led you up to this point. That peace that everybody's looking for can only come from Jesus. And the way you get his favor, it says favor here, but favor is also grace. And God is the only one that can give grace. And it's all there for the taking. It's just like any Christmas gift that's under a tree. If you don't go and pick it up, it's not a gift. The gift of salvation waits for every single person if you will reach out and just grab it. He's standing here today, this, this Christmas, let's just call this this Christmas morning, wanting you to receive his goodness. He has nothing but good news. I want you to stand with me right now as I finish this message. <clears throat> and if you're a mature believer, whether you're in O'Fallon, you're at Westport, or you're at your house, I want you to start praying right now. Pray like you've never prayed before. Because somebody's eternity hangs in the balance this morning. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven... The shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened which the Lord has told us about. <coughs> what that means is this. For you, I'm going to stop the message right here. Let's go see this thing. Let's go see this baby Jesus that these angels are talking about. What he's saying to you today is let's, I, I, I want to see what he's saying to you, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, is go check out, go, go challenge Jesus. In the way you challenge him, you say, dear Jesus, if you truly are the Messiah child, if you truly are the God-man, if you truly are the, the person that can right the wrong in my life, I challenge you, take my life. Make it yours. I challenge you today. Take my life because it's a wreck. And just see what Jesus can do. If you're to follow this story in its entirety, in verse 17, it says they seen the Christ child, and I'm paraphrasing, and then it says they were amazed. Let me tell you this. As a brother in Christ and as a pastor, when you see Jesus, when you receive Jesus in your heart, you'll be more than amazed. You, you, you'll be more than blown away. You'll, you'll be more than then enamored and in awe, you'll be awestruck, you'll be, you'll be speechless when Jesus downloads the third person of the Trinity in your life. You become a new creature in Christ. That's the Christmas story. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died on the cross at Calvary. And that's why he rose three days later. It's to set you free from sin and this nation and this world and you today. So right now, close your eyes. Oh, pastor, I've never given my life to Jesus. And oh, Fallon, if you're with the Steigers, if you're here in Westport, if you're by yourself, if you're in your bed, you can receive Jesus right where you're at. Maybe you're sick right now. You don't feel well. Spiritually, if you don't have Jesus, you're starving and you're lost. There's no way out of this thing we called life without Jesus. 
Call on Jesus today and you will be saved. If that's you today, I want you to just acknowledge some way, somehow, raising your hand or coming to the altar as the, as the praise team plays and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to give him the best gift. I heard the best gift would be myself and receive the best gift you can ever get from Jesus, the Messiah, the Savior. And if you're spiritually, uh, if you're spiritually dry as a born-again believer, let us pray for you. If, if you need to be prayed for because you're physically sick or you need to join the church, let God in his Holy Spirit deal with you today. In Jesus' name, God's people said amen. amen. And applaud the king today. Hallelujah. I said glory to the Lamb of God. Hey, be praying for the person next to you right now. Right now.